Hi, it's Rob from the Bush and Balkan. Today we're going to be doing a quick tutorial on how to paint an aspiring champion. Now this aspiring champion that I'm using is going to be the one from the Chaos Space Marine Havocs box, but it works just as well for the aspiring champions for any other, other squads. So if you watched any of the other videos, you probably know we're going to start with Liberator Gold. I'm going to start doing with all the armour trim around his armour. Now there is plenty of armour trim on the new Chaos Space Marine models, so it will take you quite a bit of time to get this done. And once we've finished off all this liberated gold, we'll come back for the next layer. Next up is a little bit of Citadel Retributor armour. We're using this for some of the details on his armour, just to break up the gold. So we've got the skull face on his knee here, with the horns. We've got the eight-pointed star on his stomach. We've got the little skull on his chainmail there. A few other little smaller details that we'll do as we go along. Now we're moving on to his skin. We're going to use Vallejo Panzer Ace's Flesh Base, which is pretty similar to Cadian Flesh. I was going to pick up a Cadian Flesh at the weekend, but it looked too similar for me to warrant getting the same colour again, so if you've got that you can use that. Now, just to note, this is the Havoc Aspiring Champion from the Chaos Space Marine Havoc's box, but they are all pretty similar, so regardless of which box it is you're using, the techniques will apply to any of the Aspiring Champions. Now we're going to use a little bit of Vallejo White, and we're going to do this section on the back of his power pack. Now the reason I'm doing this is because I want to have some sort of glowing effect on it. I've been doing lots of flames and flame coloured stuff on all of them, so they all have that kind of same matching piece, so I'm probably going to do this fiery colour. Nothing too fancy, just using a few shades in there once it's, the white is all smooth. Next base colour is going to be Citadel Mephiston Red. That's going to be to do his hair. Also the inside of his mouth as well. Now you can do this prior to the skin. If you get any Mephiston Red on his skin, because you've already coloured his skin like I have, then you can just touch that up with a little bit of flesh base or the skin colour you're using. Like so. Next up is some Citadel Lead Belcher. I'm going to use this to do all the silvery coloured metallics. So get the chainmail hanging down beneath his legs there, some part of the melter gun. Part of his power pack and a few of the smaller details. Now we're using some Citadel Rakarth Flesh. This is going to be to do some of the little bony spines and claws that seem to be growing out of his armour. There's quite a few of these dotted about, so just try and catch them all. If you do miss any as you're going through, you can always pick them up at the end. There's a couple on each armour panel, I think. But, um, some of them do get missed as I'm going through, so... I just pick them up at the end when I find them. I'm going to use a tiny little bit of Citadel Mournfang Brown. And that's just to do the ties around his hair. So it looks like a few little strips of leather or something like that that he's using for his bobble. I'm 
very small layer this one so we've finished already we're going to go on to the shades now we're going to start with citadel null oil we're going to go over all of the gold and all of the silver metallics so there's quite a lot for this one Just carry on with this one until we're all done. Next, we're going to be using a little bit of Citadel Reichland Flesh Shade, and that's just going to be for his face. So again, another very quick layer. Like so. Next up, a little bit of Citadel Drushy Violet. This is going to be to do the half of the weapon. Also his hair and the inside of his mouth. So this one is going to be Citadel Agrax Earthshade. We're going to be using this on all of the browns and the golds. I'll fail to show you the Grax Earth shade here, but what I'll do is I'll put a link to the video of how to do the Black Legion armor trim in this way. It's a slow time video and shows you it start to finish. No cuts or speed ups, it's all slow time. But you want to be putting a nice layer of Grax Earth shade over all these gold parts. It's what I'd usually use to shade gold because we've got the black on there as well. It also keeps up that grimy look. Now we're going to be using a little bit of Citadel Seraphim Sepia. And this is just to do all those little claws that we painted with Rakarth Flesh. Again, if you miss any as you're going round, don't worry about that. You can just go back and do them at the end when you find them. Like so. So now we're moving on to Citadel Retributor Armour. I'm going to reapply the base gold to the skulls and a few of the details. Now you would be thinking about when you're reapplying this colour is where the light is going to catch the gold and where it's going to make it shine the brightest. You want to be given a general covering of that but making sure that you're leaving some of the Agrax Earth shade in the recesses. This just means that we can build on the gold and give it a really nice shine. next one we're going to use is Citadel Liberator Gold. And this is going to be to highlight all of the Retributor armour and also all of the armour trim that we used Liberator Gold on earlier. On the Retributor armour you're going to be using this like the first layer of highlights. When you're painting back up the armour trim you're going to be leaving the Citadel Grax Earth Shade and Null Noil in the recesses, but giving it enough shine that you can build the next layer of highlights onto it. So you can see with all the gold how much of a difference that makes, that painted back on. Now we're just going to highlight the Retributor Armour and the Liberator Gold by using a mix of Liberator Gold and Leo Model Air Chrome. The Chrome has a really good pigment to it. So it means that it gives it that really nice shine that you want on the edges of the gold and any of the ridges or the details that will be catching the light. That really does make them stand out.
Next, it's going to be Vallejo Black. I'm going to start working on his armour and the casing for his melted gun. I really like this colour because it is a very matte black. It looks really nice as the base armour colour. So just be really careful when you're going around the gold that you've just finished. You want to just slowly edge that up to the edge of the gold so that you don't go over it. But don't paint over any of the nice shiny details. Around some areas you are going to have to use a really thin brush just so you can get the black into all those little nooks and crannies that you can't quite reach with a normal sized brush. To highlight the black we're going to be using Vallejo German Grey. This is really dark grey which I use to highlight the black on any of the models that I'm painting. I'm going to be highlighting the areas that are just going to catch the light just to give it a day-to-day -day normal lighting effect. I'm not going for extreme highlights or anything like that, it's just going to be the areas where the armour is catching the light. You're going to give that a dose of German grey. Next up we're going to be using some Citadel Mechanicus Standard Grey. I'm just going to use this to do around some of the edges, so the edges of his fingers, his gauntlets, little details where there's an edge on his armour. So if there's any little grooves or ridges, you just want to give a little highlight on that if it'd be catching the light. Also painting up the base with this as well. Obviously if you're painting the rock a different colour, you don't paint it mechanical standard grey. I'm going to work on his face. We're going to be using Vallejo Flesh Base to start with. So to start with on this, we're using the Citadel Medium Layer Brush. So just doing the areas like round the back of his head, where there's quite a big surface area you can cover. And then once we start getting onto the details like his face, we're going to be using the Army Painter Wargamer Character Brush for the next few layers, just to build up those details without the risk of obviously smudging them too much with a bigger brush. You do want to be very, very careful with these. To highlight the skin, I'm now going to add a little bit of white to the Vallejo Flesh Base. I'm going to use the Wargamer Character Brush just to start highlighting his face. Again, you want to be trying to catch the areas that will be catching the light. So if you imagine the light shining down on his head, you want to be painting those areas that would catch the light from that. Now I'll just add a little bit more white to the Vallejo flesh base mix that we've just used. I'm going to do another highlight on his face. This time you're just going to try and highlight the top edges of the areas that you've just highlighted. Next up we're just going to use pure white, I'm going to use this to do its eyes and also its teeth. Now remember as always you want to be going side to side with the brush using the very tip of it. So you're just kind of dragging the brush away from its point in a straight line. And we're going to gently do that over his teeth as well with just a tiny little bit of paint on the brush and that should pick out the individual teeth because they are quite raised in the mouths of the new miniatures. If you do miss any you can just go back in and if you do smear a bit of white on his lips or anything just go back over that with one of the previous colours. Now I'm going to go back to Vallejo Black. I'm going to be doing the pupils on his eyes. I'm 
although this looks really slow it's actually four times the speed that it was actually painted so you can see how slowly I am adding those pupils to it now we're going to start working on the haft of his weapon and also his hair and we're going to be using Citadel Mephist on red to bring that red back out again making sure that you leave some of the duty violet within the recesses Once we finish this we're going to split off because we're going to be doing the half of the weapon a different colour to his hair but up until now the base colours and the shades are exactly the same so for his hair we're going to mix a little bit of fire dragon bright to my fist on red we're going to do the first layer of highlights on that I've done a lot of black legion videos over the past few months because that's the army I've been working on. I'm just about coming to the end of that. I've got a few character models that I want to paint up and the Hellbrute and a couple of tanks so there'll probably be some more videos on those. After that I've got a choice of different things to work on so I might put that out of the vote and see which army you want to see concentrated on first. Next up we're adding some more Fire Dragon Bright and we're going to do a next layer of highlights on his hair. As you can see we're not covering the same amount of area as we did on the first highlight. You're just kind of highlighting the initial highlights that we put on there. The first layer of highlights that we're doing on the half of the weapon is Citadel Wasdaka Red. I'm just going to do a little highlight on each of these straps that are going around the handle. Like so. I'm going to mix a little bit of white with the Wasdaka Red. Just do one final highlight on the haft. We are trying to just edge each of these little straps when we're painting this colour on. Now onto Mournfang Brown and this is just going to be to reapply some colour leaving the Agraxa shade in the recesses with the bandy bit going up to his top knot. Now going on to Citadel Cassandora Yellow, we're going to use this to colour in the centre of this little sign at the bottom there and also the area on the back of his power pack. As I said earlier we're going to be doing this so it's kind of like the flaming colour just to time in with the rest of the force, like so. Now you can see on that bit where I've used a lot of the Cassandora Yellow it has left a little bit of an orangey colour around the edges which is cool. Now we're using Citadel Fugan Orange just to paint the bottom half or thereabouts of the power pack with that. And we're going to do the same, paint the bottom half of the symbol hanging from his chainmail. Next it's Citadel Caraber Crimson. I'm just going to do the bottom quarter, the little symbol at the bottom, and then the bottom quarter around the edges of the orange on his power pack. Now this is a Citadel Grax Air Shade and we're working on the barrel of his melter gun. So we're going to do a tempered metal effect on this. And I'll link a slow time video of how to do that here on the video. So next we're going on to Seraphim Sepia and this is the next layer that goes next to the Grax Air Shade. You're just doing thin bands about a mil long. Like so. Next up is Citadel Cassandora Yellow. And again, we're going to be doing a thin band, this time connecting with the Seraphim Sepia. Now, it doesn't matter if the colours are slightly wet when you put them in the next layer, if it mixes a bit, that's fine, because it gives that kind of swirling colour that you get with tempered metal. 
Next, Fugan Orange. We're going to be doing again another little ring, joining up with the Cassandora Yellow. If you spread any of these colours too far down the barrel, don't worry about it too much because the next one will probably cover it up. If not, it'll add a little bit of a change in tone to it. So now we're adding Caraberg Crimson. Same again, we're just going to do about a 1mm band next to the Fugant Orange. Like so. Now for Drucci Violet. Same again, just a little thin band next to the Caraberg Crimson. Like so. Now going on to Citadel Drachenhof Nightshade. Another 1mm band around the barrel of the Melter Gun. And then finally, we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Mulln Oil Shade. I'm going to do the very end of the Melter Gun barrel. You have to ignore this little bit and imagine me painting the very end of the barrel with Mulln Oil there, as I missed it. It's the same again, the very top end of the barrel you won't have with Mulln Oil. Now we're going on to a little bit of Ricard Flesh. We're just going to paint all these little claws which are coming around on his armour. Now we're going to be using a little bit of Vallejo White. I'm going to be painting on the Eye of Horus, the Black Legion symbol, onto his shoulder pad. Now if you're using decals to do this, then just ignore this part, you can skip past it. But I always like to try and draw the symbols on, or paint the symbols on. If only to keep practicing a little bit of freehand and learning where I've gone wrong with things, you'll probably find a lot of the armies that I have, have slightly different shaped symbols on each of the shoulder pads where I'm practicing, or changing things or just not being able to paint it exactly the same each time. That's part of the fun. That's why I like to practice it. Next up we're going to be using Citadel Cassandora Yellow. We're going to paint the whole of the symbol with that. I'll try and keep it onto the symbol as much as you can. Otherwise it does slightly discolor the grey and the black. But not too much that you notice without looking carefully. So as long as you're careful with it and you don't put too much over those areas, you'll be fine if it overlaps slightly. Next we're going to be using Citadel Fugan Orange. I'm going to paint about the bottom half of the symbol. Like so. Just touch that up a little bit. Finally we're going to be using a little bit of Citadel Caraberg Crimson to do about the bottom quarter of the symbol. When I've been applying these colours, I do apply it a bit haphazard. I like to sort of get blobs of colour that are a bit thicker in some areas than other areas. You can see here we're also adding some Caraberg Crimson around his eyes and around the metal bits that join onto his scalp and across the wound on the back of his head as well. Now going back to Citadel Lead Belcher. I'm just going to paint these little spikes on the armour plates here. Now we're going to use a little bit of Necron Compound, the dry paint from Citadel. I'm just going to gently dry brush that onto all the silvery metallics. So this will give them a really, really nice shine and make them stand out. see that just from doing the chain mail, how nice a shine it gives them. So you want to be doing that on all the tubing, the parts of his power pack that are a silvery metallic. Also any parts of the melter gun and the power mole. Now the melter gun I'm just going to give a light dry brush of the Necron compound around the top where we've just put the tempered metal effect. 
That's only because it makes the edges of it stand out, because even if it was tempered, it's probably still going to get a bit scuffed during a firefight. Like so. And that is the finished Aspiring Champion. Thanks for watching, I hope you've enjoyed the video and if you have, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future content. Also think about subscribing to some of our other social media, link below. Thanks very much.